Fremantle. Now, thank you, Mr Speaker. A couple of Saturdays ago, a summer that has at times been infuriating and heartbreaking changed into something altogether different. Back in December, it was another story. Back in December, without good reason, without proper planning or preparation, work began on the destruction of 100 hectares of remnant bushland in the Beelio wetlands. Row 8, a project that had gone nowhere for eight years, a road that quite literally goes nowhere, suddenly became a matter of huge urgency. And so began an incredible and difficult summer that has seen an extraordinary effort by thousands of ordinary people in my community who simply would not accept an abject failure of government. Citizens who stood up or sometimes sat down and who linked arms and who said no. Speaker, there's been a kind of poetry in what has occurred, even if sometimes it's been a tragic poetry, a poetry of dark symbols and bitter ironies. Walking east from the Shakespearean streets of Kubalup, you come down the hill alongside a corridor of flattened bush to the edge of Bibra Lake at the intersection of Hope Road and Progress Drive. It's at Hope and Progress where two massive pine trees had stood since the day they were planted by John Dixon in the year 1900 to celebrate his marriage. A few weeks ago, they were chopped down to stumps and left to stand in a fenced enclosure like exhibits in a display of human stupidity. This is not a case of being hypersensitive or of saying that no tree can ever be felled because, of course, clearing has occurred and it will occur, and trees will sometimes be cut down for a railway or a road or a house or a hospital. But this was a case of utterly senseless destruction. And in the end, it was that bloody-mindedness, that careless and senseless damage at the intersection of hope and progress that told us everything we needed to know about the Barnett Liberal government and its federal Liberal boosters. After last Saturday, with the election of a McGowan Labor government, the loss of those trees and all those hectares of bushland has been made totally pointless, as any reasonable person might have expected. Since the election, a number of Liberal ministers and party officials have said they knew last year the election was gone. Well, it's a shame they didn't bother to speak up before the 100 hectares were cleared and the millions of dollars were wasted. It's a shame, and I say it's a scandalous shame, that no one in the Liberal government or in main roads of Western Australia had the bottle to say to a tired and desperate government, hold on a minute. After eight long years of nothing, surely this can wait until April. Speaker, my community wants to see investment in productive infrastructure at a time of high unemployment and record underemployment. That should include projects like the North Lake Road Bridge and public transport in the form of Metronet. It should include support for freight on rail and the development of South Quay and the Quinana Trade Coast. We need that investment to provide a comprehensive and long-term solution to freight and passenger congestion. We need that investment to underwrite the creation of jobs in shipbuilding, rail infrastructure and tourism. Yet so far, all we've heard is threats from the Turnbull government to withhold funding from such projects, to give WA less than what we currently get, which is next to nothing. Speaker, the people of Western Australia have made their view of the Perth Freight Link perfectly clear. The claim by Liberal members, state and federal, that there was a silent majority in support of this project has been thoroughly exploded. The truth is, the clear voice majority has spoken. It's the same clear voice you could hear from the protesters at dawn in Kubalup day after day, or out door knocking in Bicton, or walking down yesterday with hundreds of community members to the intersection of hope and progress and seeing the new green shoots emerge from the waste. Speaker, at a time when people question the value of civic engagement, we should take heart from the battle fought to save the Biliar wetlands and to create a sensible transport future for Western Australia. I want to acknowledge first and foremost the strength of purpose and leadership of traditional owners and Noongar elders throughout the struggle. I also want to acknowledge and thank those people who made particular contributions on the front line. Kate Kelly, Felicity McGeorge and Save Biliar Wetlands, Kim Dravnicks and Rethink the Link, Piers Verstegen and the Conservation Council, Barry Healy and Fremantle Road to Rail, local councillors like Tim Barling, Sam Wainwright, Rachel Pemberton and Philip Eva, local mayors like Brad Pettit, Logan Howlett and Ron Norris. Speaker, we should respect and take heart from what a community campaign can achieve, from the influence that ordinary citizens can have through activism, commitment, patience, forbearance, reason, resilience and solidarity in a cause that is right. Even on the darkest days, which of course were typically white hot in the dust and glare of a Frio summer, when we witnessed Bankshire woodland and wetland ecosystems being turned to mulch, there were hundreds and hundreds of men, women and children who continued to believe it was not too late to stop Row 8 
And you know what? Hallelujah, we were right. The member for Benelong.